State Park called George H. Crosby Manitou State Park in Minnesota, northern Minnesota, is basically along the North Shore, although it doesn't really have access to the North Shore. It's inland a little ways. A little tiny piece of it goes out to uh, Highway 61, but you have to go well off ice Highway 61 to get here. But anyway, uh, this park was established in 1955, and from right from the start, they decided to make it a wilderness park. They wanted to keep development to a minimum, so they've got a parking lot that you can't get to this time of year. That's a different story. And they've got uh, about 21 campsites scattered around, but they're all backpacking campsites, including this one. And so, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what the park is all about. Uh, one of the features of the park is Benson Lake, which is the lake you can see sort of see through the trees over here another feature of the park is that uh, the Manitou River runs through it which is why how I got the Manitou part of the name the Crosby part of it is from a, a mining magnet who uh, turned this or turned a good chunk of this land over to the state, which was basis for the park. They've expanded a little bit beyond what he uh, donated. To get to the park, from Duluth, Minnesota, you take uh, Highway 61, Minnesota Highway 61, up past Tadaguch State Park, beautiful state, state park. In Ilgen City, you take a left on Minnesota 1 and up towards uh, Finland. Okay, and uh, once you get to Finland, Minnesota, you bypass County Road 6 and you look for County Road 7. Just up here, make a right turn on County Road 7, and then you're driving for about 8 miles. Okay, and then you come to the intersection with Benson Lake Road, and you take a right to get into the park and as you can see it's very snowy up here it's uh, like I said different from most state parks it's all backpacking sites you can actually gather your wood uh, down in dead wood you don't have to cart it in thankfully that would have uh, been the straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, it's a nice park. Very infrequently visited, especially during the winter. I mean, it, I know, uh, I mean, it doesn't look like there's been anybody here at this campsite for quite a while. I was following snowshoe tracks on the way in, but that was a couple that were just out here for a day hike. And they say that they come out here on a fairly regular basis and they hardly ever see anybody out here at all. So uh, during the winter, it's pretty quiet out here. Uh, the Superior Hiking Trail passes through the park as well. Uh, not sure I can say anything else about it at the moment. Uh, anyway, it's February 9th, 2015.
2017. I'm here for three nights. Oh, this is the campsite. You can just barely see the uh, post from the uh, grate from the fireplace sticking up through the snow there. It's obvious nobody's been here for quite a while. I think the tent pad is supposed to be up there, but I'm going to set up down here, trying something different this time. I'm going to see about sleeping under my tarp, setting up my tarp so that I can sleep under. Uh, I did bring a one-man tent along, so if uh, if the tarp didn't work out. I can always set up a, a tent. Uh, it's quite a climb to get up to this campsite. Uh, what I did, even though I reserved number 19, uh, it was just getting to be too much of a slog. And uh, the thing says it's up a steep hill and breezy. And I really didn't want breezy for tonight. It's bad enough right here. Uh, hopefully, you're not getting too much wind noise here. I don't think you are, but but it is kind of breezy back in here. And I got the wind coming straight off the lake, which is why I wanted to go to 19 in the first place, because it looked like it was on the on the uh, upwind side of the lake. Or would be. And now I have all my stuff up in the uh, in the campsite. I uh, emptied a lot of it and then pulled the sled up after it was a lot lighter. And it pulled a lot easier up the hill. But uh, uh, I'm going to have to get going, get a shelter set up, dig out the fireplace. At least I know where the fireplace is. Uh, dig that out. And uh, yeah, I get settled in because I don't have a lot of daylight left. But, uh, oh, I was going to say, uh, talk about my rig here. The sled itself, which is the blue part you can see there, the sled itself is a sled that I got many, many, many years ago from Kmart. Probably about. 2000 or so. I got it. Uh, I bought it for about 25 bucks from Kmart and it's still holding it strong. I can't remember. I think I had to add the ropes to the side of it. I uh, can't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure I had to add the rope. Uh, the bag is uh, made by Cook Custom Sewing. I told him how long my toboggan was. <coughs> And asked him to make the uh, bag just a little bit shorter than my toboggan, which he did. And uh, I can't remember when I got that, but uh, that was probably, yeah, probably about 2006-ish. Uh, it hasn't actually seen that many winter campouts yet, but uh, it's a very nice piece of gear. A lot better being able to stuff everything into a bag like that and lash the bag to the uh, toboggan than to try to. Uh, just pile everything on your toboggan and lash it in so and then I do uh, you might be able to see I'm not sure if you can in this light if I, do, man. I use paracord and I kind of crisscross kind of like a diamond hitch only instead of using uh, hitches I uh, use carabiners at uh, each of the rope points that way the rope slides through a little bit easier. I guess it still is kind of a diamond hitch, but uh, yeah, not quite, because I take it all the way across. Yeah, uh, so it's not really a diamond hitch; it's just crisscross. But uh, using those uh, carabiners makes it a lot easier. Well, 
she's not the prettiest thing in the world. But, well, <laughs> I got my snowshoes off now, so I'm post holing in places. But I think I'm going to be able to make it work. Got plenty of room in here. As long as the uh, snow we're supposed to get overnight doesn't pull it all down too far down on me. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately the poles I have, they come in two sections. One section by itself is almost too short. Well, it is too short. Uh, two sections together is way too high. So, considering that I want to conserve uh, airspace a little bit, I decided that uh, I would go with the low poles and hope that I can manage in there. Uh, I'm going to have to see about maybe stacking a little bit more snow around just to show you what I've done here. In the back, I tied it off to two trees as close to ground level as I could. One tree in the back. I've got, uh, I don't know if you can see or not, let me zoom in here. I've got one rope tied to the uh, center, uh, uh, yeah, whatever you want to call that, the center tie off to that tree at an angle to pull, pull it off of, on, to pull it up off of me. The front, uh, front corners, I have staked down with uh, snow anchors uh, and uh, then the center pole here I have tied off to a tree up there I was really planning on getting this closer to the fire than this but uh, Things didn't quite work out the way I had envisioned, mainly because of where these two trees are back in the corners. But uh, hopefully, the string, the rope is high enough off the fire grate that it's not going to burn. I don't plan on having that big of a fire, and if I don't get some wood gathered pretty soon, I'm not going to have a fire at all. So anyway, that's what I got rigged up here. I'm going to go ahead and put my stuff inside there. And uh, basically what I've got, I, I have over here a ground cloth, which should be pretty much, <laughs> pretty much the right size. Uh, yeah, there it is. Pretty much the right size for the area I have under there. Somewhere around here I have a space blanket and I have a regular wool blanket. So I'll put those down. I'll put my uh, I'll put my thermarest on top of those two items and then I have a zero degree sleeping bag that uh, I'll put on top of all of that. Now it's supposed to get down to about three or four degrees tonight. Uh, hopefully, being up a little bit off the lake, it won't be as cold as it would have been if we'd been down there. Like I said, unfortunately, we do have the wind coming off the lake, so uh, it does get kind of chilly up here once in a while. Uh, anyway, I got to get the bed set up, and then I got to go off. Unlike most uh, Minnesota state parks, you are allowed to collect your own firewood out here, but it's got to be dead and down. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that it's all the dead and down stuff is mostly covered with snow unless you can find something that went down recently or if you can find a big tree that still has branches on sticking up in the air. So uh, I don't see anything close by here. But we are supposed to go away from the campsite too to find wood, so 
let me get my tent set up I'll show you what that looks like and then well my tarp set up my sleeping system and uh, then I'll go off and try to get some wood so I can get a fire going warm up a little bit so here you can see uh, got my ground cloth wool blanket space blanket thermos hopefully it'll inflate mostly on its own although it doesn't do as well when it's cold I got my zero degree sleeping bags laying out on top so uh, there's still a lot of fixing up I got to do here but I got to get some wood I got to find some firewood is top priority well by the way I did this guy line here I did move it to a different tree back here so it's not quite right over the fire pit like it was before like I said I was kind of hoping I'd end up with the tarp a little bit closer to the fireplace hopefully I'll still be able to get some a little bit of uh, benefit from the heat up under there No, well, yeah, a little bit of wood, not nearly enough. I do have another stash that I sawed off, but I never. I gotta go back and get bring to camp. But I am so weak and hungry. And I decided that the most important thing was to get some water going. Especially since I'm having to melt snow, so I may not actually even have a fire tonight. I don't know. Let's see how things go. It might be a very quick fire if I do. But right now, like I said, I gotta get something in me. Unfortunately, heat and moisture management has been a real tough job today so some point in time I got to get some dry base layers on or I'm going to start freezing to death out here tonight well today the temperature is supposed to be around 10 degrees 10 to 12 somewhere in there I don't know what it actually got up to Tonight it's supposed to drop to about 3, but that's supposed to happen by about 10 o'clock tonight or so. And then the temperatures are supposed to start rising. It's supposed to get uh, some snow overnight, more tomorrow. It's supposed to be a total of about 2 inches, 1 to 2 inches in accumulation. So it'll be nice decorative type stuff. But tomorrow's high is supposed to be 35. So after a three tonight, we're supposed to go up to 35. And of course, I'm talking Fahrenheit. Uh, tomorrow night, actually the next two nights then, uh, it's supposed to be, the nights are supposed to be around 20 degrees. And uh, Saturday is supposed to be about 31. So a little bit cooler than tomorrow. And then Sunday, I'm bugging out of here, and it's also supposed to be in the 30s. Can you guess what's for supper tonight? Have you been watching any of my videos? Yeah, it shouldn't be a surprise. Mountain House. Beef stroganoff with noodles. I do have a surprise in store for you guys for the next two nights. But at least I'm going with my old standby tonight. So, uh, let's see how things go. Coming up on 9.30 now. Uh, I never did start a fire. I just didn't get enough wood, and I definitely don't have enough tinder to get something going. And it's a shame, because this is the night I really could have used it. But tomorrow I'll make sure I get some wood 
and uh, hopefully find some ginger along the way too. Uh, I do have some uh, a stash of birch bark with me that I uh, basically save for emergency situations. I'd rather not dig into that supply. I've uh, done it a couple of times recently and my supply is getting pretty pretty low. So rather not dig into it, but if I need to, I need to, I guess. But anyway, oops, I didn't mean to leave this light on. Dueling lights here. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm getting close to uh, bedding down for the night. I uh, made some rearrangements to my tarp that I think is going to uh, work a little bit better for me. So I'll try to remember in the morning to show you what I did and what the modifications were. And uh, by the morning I can tell you how well it worked too. Uh, we are supposed to get some snow tonight after midnight into tomorrow morning. They're also talking about wind gusts up to 20 from the south, but we're pretty well protected here from a south wind, so uh, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Now tomorrow, what I want to do is get over to, is to hike over to the uh, Manitou River. There's a series of three waterfalls over there that I'd like to uh, get over there and shoot and just walking along the river, period. But I know it is kind of a, a rugged trail down into the river valley, and then it's going to be quite a climb to come back out, but at least I won't be dragging a toboggan behind me. The toboggan will be sitting here. I'll just be uh, hauling my camera gear around. Anyway, uh, that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, they are talking temperatures right around 30 tomorrow, so uh, instead of the 35 that I was hearing before. So it's uh, still going to be kind of warmish, but at least hopefully it won't get quite so slushy as, uh, as it would have done if it had gotten to 35. So, um, so again, uh, I think actually the temperatures have started rising already tonight. They weren't supposed to start rising again. You know, they were supposed to bottom out about 9 or 10 o'clock at about 3 or 4 degrees. Last check on the radio, most of the stations in the area were reporting low teens. So <clears throat> I hope I don't rust to death in my zero degree bag now. But uh, what a problem to have. Anyway, um, don't know when I'll get up in the morning. Sunrise will be about 7.20. Uh, since it won't be coming up over the lake, it'll be coming up over the hills behind us. Uh, probably won't get much daylight in here until about 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, a lot's going to be, depend on whether Mother Nature calls and also uh, just how warm it is or how cold it is in the morning. So I think that wraps it up for today. I've now gone through two batteries and I haven't charged any up yet. So I do have two more, at least one more for this camera, two more I think. So hopefully I'll be able to get by. I did bring my charger, not the solar panel because it's not supposed to get much sun, wouldn't do much good this time of year anyway but I brought my charger so uh, but I don't want to use it when it's too cold because I don't want that to deplete too, too rapidly either <clears throat>